Hi, um, my name is Jenny. I'm going to present our work on relational debugging, pinpointing the root causes of performance problems. Performance issues can be costly. Google finds that even a 0.5 seconds delay in page load time caused a 20% drop in repeat traffic. In worst cases, performance issue can turn a system completely unresponsive. For example, the Go process consumes so much memory, it crashes the server periodically. As a result, it's critical to diagnose and fix performance issues as soon as possible. Yet performance debugging is notoriously difficult. Unlike functional correctness, performance behavior is fundamentally relative. For example, the server response time is slow because the server is consuming too much memory. It could be expected behavior because the workload changed. For example, there are more requests per second or more allocations per request. However, if the server consumes more memory, even though the request rate and type stay the same, then there could be a bug. For example, a memory leak, which means fewer allocated objects get deallocated. In order to fully diagnose the increase in memory usage, we must consider performance relative to different inputs or events in the execution. In fact, performance is relative like motion is relative in the physical world. For example, an observer finds a person running at the speed of five kilometers per hour. The next day, the observer spots the same person running on top of a train, but they appears to be moving at 35 kilometers per hour. Did the runner turn into Usain Bolt? Now the stationary person is confused. But if we move the reference point to the train, however, we'll find that runner is still running at the same speed. In this case, the speed of the runner observed by the stationary person is like the overall performance. The train speed is like request rate, and the runner speed is like the amount of memory allocated per request. Just like the observer has a hard time directly determining the runner's true speed, in complex software systems, it's hard to capture the root cause of performance issues without examining relative performance at the right reference point. Because performance is relative, existing tools that automate root cause diagnosis work poorly on performance bugs. Take statistical debugging, for example. It works by identifying absolute predicates that are correlated with the failure. For example, if every time the server crashes, the flag is set to true, and when the same flag is set to false, the server never crashes, statistical debugging will return the flag being set to true as a root cause. In addition, statistical debugging also requires inputting many execution variants explicitly labeled as fail or success. For performance bugs, however, both the outcome and the root cause tend to be relative, which fundamentally breaks the assumptions of statistical debugging. In this work, we propose relational debugging. Relational debugging captures relative performance using what we call relations. We use relations as a general representation of performance root causes. A relation is between two program events. Request and malloc, for example, this relation represents, for each request, the number of dependent malloc invocations. In this case, the request serves as a reference point for malloc. If we weigh each malloc by the size of the object allocated, the relation contains the amount of memory allocated per request. And relations are generalizable to different performance resources. If there are a lot of requests, the relation now becomes a distribution, where each sample is the number of malloc invocations per request. Formally, a relation between event A and B is a distribution over a set of samples, where each sample is the number of event, event Bs that causally depend on one instance of event A. Relational debugging computes the relations from both good and bad runs, 
and the relations that showed large differences are likely the root causes. However, implementing this idea in complex real-world systems is challenging. This is because there are a huge number of events in an execution, and the number of possible relations are combinatorial. How can relational debugging efficiently find the relations that capture the root cause? In essence, relational debugging starts from the most general reference points and progressively moves them closer to the real cause following program dependencies. Back to the example where the server consumes too much memory, to diagnose this issue, relational debugging starts from the root node in the dependencies which is the entry of the main function. Relational debugging first checks the number of requests handled by the main function for a given time period, and since it finds this relation does not change, it follows the dependencies and moves the reference point to the handler of each request. Now this relation has changed, which means the changing allocation behavior of each request is the root cause. This way, relational debugging avoids combinatorial explosion and only carries out a linear search to capture the root cause. We implement relational debugging with Perspect and scale it to real-world systems. To use Perspect, the user needs to provide only one reproduction of the good and bad run, respectively, and the user needs to specify the performance symptom to analyze. For example, instructions that directly consume or free memory, or hotspot functions. Perspect outputs ranked root cause candidates in the form of relations, and the dependency graph that shows how the root cause relation affects the symptoms. Perspect identifies events in the execution that are causal predecessors of the performance symptoms and limits relational debugging to these events. Next, Perspect builds relations from reference points farther, farthest away from the symptoms in program dependencies. It filters out relations that have not changed, then refines the remaining ones by moving the reference point closer to the symptom. The surviving relations capture the root cause. Let me walk you through how Perspect diagnoses one of the hardest performance bugs, Go909, which causes severe memory problems. The user finds that the program executes normally with a 64-bit Go runtime, but runs out of memory with a 32-bit Go runtime. Go909 impacted many workloads and was extensively discussed. Yet diagnosing it was nearly impossible. More than a year after the initial report, the root cause was only discovered through a trial and error process. Why was Go909 so hard to diagnose? Because the bug breaks no absolute predicates or invariants. To understand the root cause of Go909, let's first look at these two objects. The first one is a live object that is reached by pointer P returned by malloc. The second object is a dead object with no real pointers pointing to it. However, its address happens to be the same as the value stored in constant Q. A precise GC algorithm should know Q is not a pointer and reclaim the second object. However, this GC algorithm will mark the second object, preventing it from getting reclaimed. In fact, the root cause is that most of the objects marked by GC are dead objects. Perspect precisely captures the root cause of Go909 using a relation, which describes the number of malloc events that each mark event depends on. In the good run, most of the mark events mark live objects, where the mark event has a data flow dependency on malloc through the pointer. In the bad run, most of the mark events mark dead objects, which do not depend on malloc. Representing each relation with its average, we find that 99% of the mark events in the bad run mark dead objects, causing a severe memory leak. In the good run, this ratio is as low as 1%. This is because in 64-bit 
go runtime, constant values tend to not collide with objects' addresses. We show how Perspec works on Go909, and the first step is to carry out causal analysis. Recall that the heap size is abnormal in Go909. Perspec starts with the events that modify the heap size, which are malloc and reclaim. We call these events performance symptoms. Perspec then identifies events which the symptoms causally depend on, constructing a dependency graph like shown in the slide. This graph includes important GC functions, mark and sweep. The mark function scans the stack for variables that point to the heap, and if so, marks the object being pointed to. The, the sweep function reclaims unmarked objects. In the next stage, Perspect applies relational debugging. We focus on the symptom at reclaim. Perspect starts by building relations of reclaim with respect to each function's entry point, obtaining three relations. The first one represents, given each malloc object, the number of dependent reclaims. The second one represents the number of reclaimed objects after each mark phase. And the last one represents the number of reclaimed objects by each sweep phase. We focus on the last relation, which decreased significantly in the bad run. Analysis on the other relations eventually lead to the same root cause. Starting with the relation that captures the number of reclaimed objects by each sweep phase, we move the reference point closer to the symptom in order to get to the actual root cause. Initially, the reference point is at the entry of sweep, but we can move it to the if statement since the relation between the old and new reference points did not change. Because the number of objects in the heap span is still the same, the for loop still iterates the same number of times. By further refining this relation, Perspect eventually, eventually obtains the root cause. The details can be found in our paper. We evaluate Perspect on 12 real world bugs, and Perspect is able to diagnose 10 of them. For one case, the bug is in the kernel, and Perspex excludes the root cause from the Go runtime, effectively triaging the bug. Perspex cannot diagnose another bug because the code changed too much. We use Perspex to diagnose two open bugs. For one of them, a developer commented that Perspex's result ties all the pieces together into a nice explanation. We carry out a user study and found participants solve the bug nearly 11 times faster with Perspect. We optimize Perspect such that it takes on average eight minutes to run on most of the cases. In addition to statistical debugging, Perspect's closest related work include X-ray. X-ray captures root causes in input parameters and configurations, but does not detect bugs in the code. Additional solutions are designed for specific patterns of bad performance. To conclude, we invent relations. Relations capture relative performance between program events and are a general representation of performance root causes. We propose relational debugging, which narrows down to the most specific, specific relations to capture the root cause of performance bugs. We implement relational debugging with Perspect and scale it to complex real-world systems. We use Perspect to diagnose two open bugs. Perspect source code is available online. Thank you.